Welcome to Maze Lico Challenge. This problem is called find the shortest super string. Given an array of strings words, return the smallest string that contains each string in words as a substring. If there are multiple valid strings in, of the smallest length, return any of them. Okay, so you may assume that no string in words is a sub substring of another string in words. So say that we're given uh, these words here. This super string contains every single word in our words list. Basically what we're trying to figure out is how many of these words can we overlap uh, and save as much space as possible. So the order is going to matter uh, and yeah so this problem's pretty simple to understand but the solution is very difficult. In fact I think it's the hardest question this this year. Uh, so I'll do my best to try to explain the solution but I still don't quite understand it well so uh, just keep that in mind. All right, so the first thing we need to figure out or understand is that uh, this can be solved as a graph problem. Um, one of the things we could kind of see is every time we want to add another string, we want to check to see is how much overlap is there between the source word and the target word that we're trying to add. So say that we're, this is our source word and we are trying to add uh, this word here. How much, like, space can we save? Well, if we were just uh, looking at the entire word to see if there's an overlap, say that we looked at our target word, our source word, and said, okay, from this end, from the very whole string, is it the same as this word here? And obviously it's not, so we can't save four. But if we look at this, CTA, CTA, we can save three character strings here because all we need to do is just add this end, and that's going to contain that first string of six characters in here, right? So this would be the minimizing uh, path, path. So what we'll do is create some sort of data structure that's going to record the cost from a source index to a target index, because that's all that really matters. And um, once we have that, then we can make this into a graph problem to solve it out. So let's start by creating a lookup. Uh, we're going to call it cost. And I'll start by initializing n to be the length of words. So this cost here is going to be representing to us from the index number is going to represent the word that we're at and each one of these is going to have a list of the character that we're the index word that we're trying to add here and we want to calculate how much space can we save so we'll just start with zero because we don't know what they are yet and we'll times this by nine so each one of these are going to be a word that we can add and we'll say for blank in range of n Okay, so now we have our data structure. We want to calculate this out. So for i in range of n, we want to calculate for every other one, for j in range of n as well. We're going to calculate to see, um, depending on what the minimum length is, recall our example that we just mentioned with these two. We're going to take the minimum length between the two and check to see from the starting point of this, can is the same as the ending strings of whatever is in here. And if it's not, we'll just continue on to see, okay, what is these three equal to these three, and so on and so forth, and see if we can add it up. So uh, what we'll do is have another nested for loop. We'll say for k in range of uh, the minimum between length of words i and length of words j. And we're going to move backwards because we, we want to uh, see if what the largest one is. Okay, so if words of i, uh, let's see, minus k onward is equal to words of j uh, up to k, this should be j here. Okay, if this is true, then we want to update our cost to be equal to k. So cost of i to k or j is going to be equal to k, uh, and then we'll immediately break. Uh, otherwise, if like we can't find one that's true, then it's just going to stay at zero. So let's first look at this and see if it makes sense. Um, here with the, this example, there's no overlap at all. So you can see like the only times that we can save space is if we add the same letter to itself. Because so if, we, if we add Alex to Alex, we can save four characters because we don't need to add anything at all. And later on, when we build up this string, we could just subtract the however many letters that we're able to save from the beginning. 
and just add whatever's left to that string. Okay, so now we have that cost. Now this is where it gets difficult. Um, how can we calculate what our minimum string could be? Um, now if we were to do this brute force, we could create like a permutations list of all the different paths that we can take to add all the words. Like we can have, uh, I, I don't know, like all sorts of all sorts of different paths that we can take to add every single word. And then we can just like um, build up the string and calculate the minimum cost. And whatever is the minimum cost, we can return that string, right? But that is going to be an exponential time. And it's going to reach a time limit. So that's not going to work. But surely if there's a recursive solution, then there's probably a dynamic programming solution, right? So here's what we're going to do. There's two insights here. The first thing is using a bit mask. And recall that there's only 12 words. So what we can do is use a bit mask to represent the state at which we're in right now. So say we had like some sort of bit mask like this. Uh, each one of these ones represents that fact that we've added this word to the string. Okay. Uh, but that's not enough because the order matters, right? And specifically for this question here, it's really more about uh, what character or what word have we just added. So have we added just added this one? Have we just added this one? Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so what we're going to have to do then is create some sort of dynamic programming array, um, DP array. And what this will contain is um, like the key will be the bit mask representation of our state. And we're going to have a list here of every single index um, inside of our word. So there'll be 12 maximum. And this will be contain two things. It's going to contain first the length of the string that we've calculated so far. Okay, and as well as the string so far that, that we've cal that we've created. And that way, at the very end, we could just take our uh, bit mask that represents everything added like, like this. And we'll just take whatever the minimum length is uh, for this bit mask here and return the string that represents the minimum length because we'll be calculating it all the way through. So um, that's definitely hard to understand, but but I'll, I'll do my best here and we'll try to figure out everything. Okay, so first thing we want to do is create our DP array, right? So the DP array is just going to be a nested list and it's going to contain the list here. And we have to have what a tuple, right? And the first thing of length will start with an infinite value so that we could uh, decrease it immediately every time. And we'll have what an empty string at first. So we'll have a tuple, empty string, and we'll multiply this by however many indexes we have. Now we want to have this, oops, let's see here. So we have this, and then we want to do this inside of a for loop. So for blank and range of what? Uh, well, we want to have every single state possible, right? So it's from zero, from zero all the way on to all ones. So we'll just have to use a uh, bitwise here and say one with n being all the representations right there. Okay, so now we have our DP array. Okay, so now the first thing we want to fill our base condition. Uh, so for, let's see, i in range of n, we're going to calculate um, everything with like one state here because this we know if if we're just adding this first word initially, then the minimum cost is just going to, just going to be the word that we're adding the length of the word and it's going to be the word itself because we've gone from zero to adding a word, right? So we know what that is. Um, so we'll just take DP and we'll say I of what? I like this and this will equal let's see it will be words I or length of words I and words I okay so let me make sure this also looks good here Okay, so you can see like when we're adding here four Alex, five loves, and there should be eight lead code right here. And it's kind of hard to 
um, know what all these index numbers are right now because these are all like states, but uh, so be it. Like, we'll just assume that's correct for now. Okay, so now, now we need to figure out like update our DP array in order for every single state as well as every single different index number that we're adding at from the state before. Okay, so uh, we'll call this for just call it bit mask in a range of i to n. Okay, so we'll, what we got here? Okay, so the first thing we want to figure out is from which source to which target are we coming from? Okay, so to do that, I'm going to first calculate the different poss possibilities from which index to which index we're coming from right now. Uh, so to do this, let's see, I'm um, going to call this bits and we're going to say for j in range of, uh, let's see, n, if we find that in this state, this index number exists, then we'll add it to this bits. So if bit mask, and we'll use the and uh, one j. If that's true, then we'll add it to this bits. And now we can calculate what the word that we're adding, or the index number anyway, and as well as our source. And we'll say orphans in, and we'll use this iter tools permutation to get every single different permutation from the source to target. And this actually matters because depending on what word we're adding and which word we're coming from, uh, it could be different. The answer could be different. So permutations in bits, and we'll have two. Okay, so now let's first calculate the candidate. Like, what's the word um, that we will end with right now? Because if it's not smaller than uh, some previous value we've calculated, then, then we should just leave it. So the candidate's going to be Let's see, we're going to look at our DP and we'll say, um, now this one gets really tricky, but, oh, that's right. Um, we're going to use a or symbol here because we want to calculate like when the state didn't, didn't have this added character, right? So uh, what we'll do is say or and we'll take one to add like this and we're going to take the add here. Oh, no, no, it's not the add, it's the source, as well as take the second character, which is going to be a string. And we're going to add the second element. So this will be whatever path string that we calculate so far without having added this word. And we'll take, uh, let's see, we're going to add this. So we'll say words add. And we are going to take from uh, our cost function however many words we can save onward, right? So click the cost and we'll take uh, from target to source onwards. So whatever we can save onwards, we'll add that to our candidates. And now we're going to try to update our DP. So the DP is going to be, let's see, the bit mask, the index number we're trying to add, and we'll take the minimum between DP bit mask and add and our tuple of the candidates, length of the candidates, as well as the candidate itself. Okay. Finally, uh, at the very end, we should have the very last number here. DP will contain like. Um, a bunch of candidates with with the different index numbers added last and we want to take the minimum between these right so we'll take the minimum of this and we'll just take the second element inside of that so okay so let's see if this works I'm sure I messed something up here so yep target there's no targets to be add.
Okay, so uh, I don't know if this worked, but whatever, YOLO, let's see if this works. Uh, okay, so I messed something up here. A little length of these look the same. Hmm. Words I'm adding in the cost. Maybe. Yeah, I might have just switched that around. It should be the source to add. Let's see. All right, yeah, yeah. So I think that's what the problem was. Let's go ahead and try that again. Yep, there we go. Accepted. Oof. So are you confused? I mean, me too. Like, what the hell? This is not a reasonable interview question. Um, and even after looking at the solution, I'm, I'm still confused. I'm still very confused about this, but hopefully this kind of helps you kind of get there. Um, I may have made some mistakes in what I was explaining. Um, but yeah, time complexity wise, it's going to be exponential for sure because of this permutation. It's going to be uh, two to the nth power as well as uh, n squared because of all these nested for loops. So um, it's still better than doing the brute force method, but you know, if I was just trying to solve this on the spot, maybe the brute force method, like, would be acceptable. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. All right, so I definitely recommend looking more into this, uh, specifically this traveling salesman problem uh, could help. But these bit mask situations are really confusing and something that I don't fully understand myself. So, sorry I can't be more help. I hope this helps. There are definitely more places that you can look for. Uh, resources. So thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.